Hello, my name is Frederick and the content of this tutorial is automated feature selection using Elastic. This is something you will find useful when working with large three-dimensional datasets. You already know that Elastic computes different image features which capture different kinds of information about the local image appearance. Let's look at an example project. We start a new project and load a stack of images. This is a stack of fluorescence microscopy images which show part of a zebrafish embryo in the blastula stage, courtesy of Jochen Wittbrot and colleagues. As you can see, if we select all available features for this fairly large dataset, we would require nearly 50 gigabytes of main memory. This is not available on my machine, and probably not on yours either. But are all these features really necessary to get a good segmentation? Or may a part of them already be sufficient? In this case, we could save a good deal of memory by only computing the most useful features. In order to find these, we train a classifier on a smaller part of the same dataset, which should be small enough that we can compute all features for this part. So we start a new project. The stack of images is the same. But instead of the whole 930 times 900 times 100 voxels, we only select 300 times 300 times 100 voxels. If we now compute all features, this only requires a bit over 5 gigabytes of memory, which is available. The feature computation now takes some time, so I skip the video a bit. What comes now is similar to the normal use of Elastic, but with a small difference. I need a classifier which supports feature selection, which I can find in the classifier options. I select the random forest classifier with variable importance. Now my task is to distinguish between the cell nuclei, these bright blobs, and the dark background. Hence I create two classes, red for background, green for nuclei. You remember that I can zoom in using the plus key. Now I place some foreground labels. And some background labels. And start the live prediction mode. I place additional labels until I'm satisfied with our predictions. If I want a toggle between the two classes, I can do this with a K key. And I can use the mouse wheel to scroll into adjacent slices. Okay, I think this is as good as we can get. Now I stop the live prediction mode and start to train and predict. The 
This is the segmentation that we get. Now for feature selection we must export the trained classifier to an HD5 file. We save it under the name FeatureSelection.h5. Now we want to find out what the most relevant features actually are. In future versions of Elastic, this will be possible from inside the program, but currently it must be done via an offline script. So we close the main window for now. You can find the script in your Elastic installation folder on the MISC scripts. It is called getImportantVariables.py. Calling it with minus minus help shows us the usage. We can pass between two and four arguments. The classifier file, which we have exported, and in this, our case this was feature-selection.h5. The image dimensionality, either 2 or 3, in this case we have 3D images. The number of variables that we want to select, let's say we are interested in the leading 8 ones. And the file name of the variable importance plot that we want to create. Let's say we want to call it variableimportance.png. So, these are the eight most important features together with the relevance measure. Let us now have a look at the plot that the script has just generated. Technically, the variable importance measure is called the maximum of the mean Gini increases of the respective feature group, hence the title. The X labels are abbreviations of the feature group names that you are familiar with from the feature selection editor inside Elastic. C for color, E for edge, O for orientation, big T for texture, small t for tiny scale, S for small scale, small m medium scale, large scale, huge scale, mega huge scale, giga huge scale. From our training process we get 10 estimates for this value, which form the box plots, and we select the, in this case, 8 features with the highest medians of all 10 values. The medians are indicated by the red bars, and the selected features are indicated by the blue arrows. This plot is useful if you want to get a feeling for the distribution of the variable importance and for picking the number of features to select. For instance, this plot shows that there are apparently 11 important features. These three, these four, and these four. It would also be a sensible choice to select all these 11. But for now I'll stick with the 8 most important, where I have the full names printed out. So I start Elastic again. Start a new project. 
and again load the entire stack I'm interested in. This time, I only select the most important features. These are Edge Huge, Edge Mega Huge, Orientation Mega Huge, Orientation Huge, Texture Huge, Texture Mega Huge, Edge Giga Huge, Texture Giga Huge. As you can see, this time I require only a bit over 16 gigabytes of memory compared to the nearly 50 gigabytes I re would require for all features. And now it is perfectly practicable to keep everything in memory. Now the features are computed. This takes some time, so I skip the video a bit again. And now it is just the normal use of Elastic. I need no special classifier anymore since variable selection is already finished. I just select the two classes, place the labels, Do the live prediction and further refine it just as usually. I guess I can stop here and again train and predict. Let's take some time or speed up again. So it's done and we can have a look at the final segmentation. I'll change the opacity a bit. Well, this doesn't look too bad or what is your idea. In fact, throwing out uninformative variables may keep the segmentation accuracy constant or even improve it. So, whenever your data becomes really large, try feature selection to keep it manageable. Good success with that.